I am a singer, and before I get into my talk, I want to acknowledge another singer. And her name is Princess Ariel from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> and the title of my talk, Somebody Stole My Voice Again, came from a photo that I saw of her on Facebook. Now, in this photo, she looks strikingly beautiful like all Disney princesses, the long flowing hair, the deep aqua blue eyes, and the creamy fair skin. But sadly, she's holding this sign that says, somebody stole my voice again, and I could relate. Yeah. So um, I really wanted to bring a copy of the photo here with me today for all of you to see but it was a pain in the butt to go through the news feeds and find it again, and I thought, hey, this is Ted. Why not be creative? I could redesign this photo and kind of recreate what a beautifully singing Disney princess looks like. And so, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case you're wondering, the afro can get wet under the water, and I have to thank my sister and niece for doing this photo for me. So while Princess Ariel's voice was deceitfully stolen by a large octopus, my voice was stolen by a small polyp. And a polyp is a blister that develops on the vocal cords, usually over an extended period of vocal abuse or misuse, or there could be a single incident that causes it to erupt, like yelling at a concert. So this is what my vocal folds looked like, and those are my vocal folds. And there's the blister. So after an emergency visit to my otolaryngologist, I was immediately scheduled for surgery and put on complete vocal rest, meaning no talking, no singing, and no vocalizing. Zip. And uh, this all happened in my second to last semester at Berklee College of Music, where I was studying voice. And I was also actively going after my music career as a recording artist and performer. And so this was devastating news to think that I might not ever be able to sing again, or my voice wouldn't sound the same. And so I learned how to cry dramatically, <laughs> uh, laugh hysterically, and cough. <sighs> in silence. So when my otolaryngologist asked me to speak for the very first time after the surgery, I felt like a part of me was reborn again. The human voice is one of the most powerful forms of communication, self-expression, and creativity. But all of us in this room, we cringe at the sound of hearing our voices, right? right? It's like, oh, I don't want to hear that. And that's because I believe the voice is so deeply connected to our self-esteem, our self-worth, and our self-image. And it's this little barometer that kind of reveals to the world something about you, how you're feeling inside. And I've heard the human voice described as the organ of the soul as a divine instrument that literally breathes life into words, Maya Angelou. And when we exercise our voice, it's the muscle of our soul. So just imagine for a moment what it would be like without your voice. For me, that time was painful and stressful, and there was also peace and clarity during those moments of silence, and there is definitely humor. So I'm going to share with you some of the humor. I walked around with a pen and notebook to communicate. And there were some people who could just not deal with the nonverbal communication at all, and they would dismiss me in the entire transaction. For example, the parking clerk who dismissed my parking ticket because the meter was broken and buried in snow, was what I wrote, ticket dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were people who would uh, read what I wrote, they would look at me, and they would gesture to use the pen and notebook, and I found this like the most healing and human because they were meeting me right where I was, right? And then there were those people who would look at me, read what I wrote, and then they would respond really loudly. 
Like, the, the tartar sauce on the filet of fish was gonna be an extra dollar and 59 cents, and I'd be like, okay, I can hear you, I just can't <laughs> talk back to you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the humor was definitely healing, but it was um, through the peace and clarity that I began to realize that there was this imbalance, right? This internal struggle between my inner voice and what I was feeling inside, and my speaking voice and what I was saying on the outside, right? And then there were all the voices of other people, their opinions and stereotypes and perceptions and all of this was going on and I began to realize like, wow, for 10 years prior to the eruption of the polyp, I had been experiencing this crazy vocal fatigue. You guys, like, I would talk and by the end of the day I would feel like my throat was on fire. After a show, it would be maybe days or even weeks before I could speak without pain. And it was all starting to make sense and it wasn't ironic that my polyp erupted at the pinnacle of this imbalance. Kids, cover your ears. I was in the middle of a recording process of a song called I'm the Sh It, <laughs> and uh, the polyp erupted. And uh, I was convinced by this producer and mentor that I was working with that in order for me to be successful in the music business, I had to record black music and that I would not make it unless I recorded urban music. And there was this struggle inside of me, and I was like, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but that's not what my voice is supposed to be. But I did it anyways, so I want to share with you what that voice sounded like. I, I don't really care that you drop ass cars and you got a Bugatti in your garage. I don't really care that you got Mac girls and you got a private jet to fly around the world. I don't really care about your entourage, your bank account, or what you think about. I don't really care about your magic stick. I need a dollar, boy, you just fit this in. Cause I'm a shh. I don't want to swear, but I swear that I know I'm a shh. I don't want to swear, but I swear. <laughs> So it wasn't a bad song, right? You're nodding your head right here. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And I actually released the song, and it was on a CD with other songs similar to it. And I started to get a lot of success um, in Boston and nationally, you know, winning awards and working with Grammy award-winning producers and artists. And finally, after 10 years, I got it. I got the dream that every artist wanted. In 2013, I got the offer from a major record label a major recording deal. And it was supposed to be my dream, and I sat with it for months and months and months. But I realized that it wasn't what I wanted. And unlike my friend Princess Ariel, I wasn't willing to sign the deal and sacrifice my voice to be somebody else. Because I felt like I would have had to be somebody else in order to sign that deal. I would have had to be whatever a black woman is supposed to be in the music industry, right? And so I, I had to stop suppressing my emotions, right? I had to stop projecting to overcompensate or simply not speaking my truth out of insecurity, intimidation, or fear of rejection. And what I realized through all of this journey is that I wasn't free, you know? Not only was I not free in my, my speaking voice, my singing voice, but I, I wasn't free in my whole body because I really believe that it takes your whole body to speak your truth and your whole body suffers when you don't. So my polyp was a direct physical result of how I was feeling inside. Within my polyp lay, a five foot two young woman, I know I look taller on the stage, <laughs> who uh, had to raise her voice a little bit and add a hint of aggression for people to really listen to what she had to say. And within the polyp lay an aspiring vocalist who hid her age, her life experience, and her knowledge because she was told too many times that that would jeopardize her chances of making it in the music industry. And within the pile of play, a sixth grade girl who substituted words like fresh and dope 
for awesome and wicked Pissa when she moved to a predominantly white suburb because she couldn't change the color of her skin, but she could change the sound of her voice. And so when I didn't take that deal, and when I started to investigate my voice, I decided that it was time to set some of those voices free. Sitting up in my room, fill my nappy head with doom, slowly filling up with gloom, cause I'll never ever be that cool. I'll never be the flyest chick in the room or be that chick with her own perfume. I switch my hips to get all the dudes, all the girls wanna be me in my school. It's a beach day, that's what Jenny said, as she waved her pretty fingers through her flowing hair. I couldn't stand her cause Jenny thought she was better. Or maybe I was jealous cause Jenny got all the fellas. So what's wrong with me, so wrong with me. My booty don't fit in them skinny jeans. Can't place my face on magazines. She's popular, she's prom queen. She's Maybelline, I'm just maybe. Maybe one day they will all see the beauty in me. Pretty. I wanna know what it's like. I wanna be a pretty girl. I wanna know what it's like. I want to know what it's like. I want to be a pretty girl. I want to know what it's like. So, um, thank you so much. It's like so emotional, but. Uh, my exercise for all of you, you know, what I want to share with you and have you take home from this incredible experience is um, we all have recording devices, right? So take out your phone and one day just uh, press record and I just want you to talk into it and uh, talk about a moment, talk to yourself, maybe say something that you haven't said in a while. Uh, maybe it's something you want to share with a friend that you can't say, or a loved one, or maybe it's even rehearsing your speech. I want you to listen back to that voice. Does that voice make you cringe? Or is it, I don't know, are your fears buried in bravado or self-doubt? Do you even believe what that voice is saying to you when you listen back? I want you to think about this and investigate it because I know, I really know from the experience that once you become okay with that voice, then no one can ever steal your voice away from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.